Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our weekend Cabral host calls. Great to have you with me here today. Excited to get into today's community questions. Yesterday, we answered so many different questions from literally all around the world. Those were dating back, or the questions came in in late January. I know that that's obviously a few weeks behind. Do keep in mind that every question that comes in does get answered, and we simply go in the order they've come in, and we answer somewhere between 15 and 20 questions each and every weekend, and we will be doing that for the foreseeable future, for however long this podcast goes, which I hope is uh, many, many, many years to come. So what I want to do is, hopefully you tuned into yesterday's show as well, but we answered a lot of great questions there. They're, They're different, of course, every single weekend. But if we get the same question coming in, I simply refer people back to the search bar at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. And we're hoping to do this in the future is we're actually going to take all the podcasts. Today is number 1164 for people wanting to head over to the show notes page and read all the questions along with us. It's at stephencabral.com forward slash 1164 today is we're going to take all of these 1,164 podcasts. And probably when we get to around 1,200 or 1,300 or something, it should be done. And what this means is we're going to lump them into categories. So we're going to create archives. We're going to create ones on digestion. So all of that will be coming soon. Stay tuned. We're always taking your feedback. I don't want to stop doing the podcast. I hope you don't want me to stop doing the podcast either. So what I'd like to do is continue for the podcast to be a daily thing, but just make it easier for people to find the answers that they're looking for. All right. Let's get into today's questions. The first one is from Charity. Charity is asking, I ordered a 14-day detox. The fifth day into the second week, I got sinus pressure and a cold. Mind you, I haven't been sick in probably 12 years other than a minor cold, maybe once or twice. I woke up this morning and my left eye is a little bloodshot and red. Just wondering if it's a side effect of the detox. I've never seen anything like this. Thank you. All right. Yeah, happy to answer the question. So, you know, there's when people write in with sometimes things like this, they got a cold or their eye is bloodshot. It may have to do with the detox or it may have nothing to do with the detox. Like you never know. I mean, sometimes you get a virus and sometimes you get a cold and at the same exact time you were doing a detox. It's possible. But there's also the principle that's used in homeopathy and also the principle that's used in bioregulatory medicine as well as in traditional naturopathic medicine where the body begins to retrace steps and it begins to remove these things from the body. So for people who used to have allergies, as you're doing a detox, you might feel some allergy-based symptoms like histamines like this with an itchy eye or so. And for people that used to get headaches, you might get some headaches. And again, there's actually a little bit of study behind this, but not a ton right now. So I don't put a lot of credence into it, but what I can tell you is this. As you are helping your body to detoxify, when the liver doesn't keep up as much, you might get a little bit of inflammation or whatever it might be, but it's short-lived. So keep in mind, most people experience it for a day or two, and then it's gone. And they might get it around day two or day three or day four, and then it's definitely gone by days five, six, seven. So we always tell people too that the ways to help this along as well, to do a sauna if you would like, to do some dry brushing, to do an Epsom salt bath, to get a nice light massage, to get extra sleep and extra rest, your plenty of hydration. I mean, the detox is not meant to be super intense. What it's meant to be done is every 12 weeks so that you stick with it and little by little, you keep cleaning out the system and you start to eat healthy and you start to follow a healthy lifestyle. That's what it's all about. But of course, you can always slow it down, meaning that you can take one capsule of each instead of two. And you can also make smoothies in the morning instead of just doing the detox powder and water. So, I mean, you can you can make it your own if you want. I mean, to get the best results, simply follow the directions. So, Charity, I can't tell you exactly what it was, but what I can tell you is this, 
is that most likely it, it's already gone, right? So you asked this on 127, I wish, of course, we could answer these same day, but you know that you can get same day support at cabralsupportgroup.com. All right, James up next. In my late 30s, and I've been dealing with asthma since childhood. I eat a healthy diet, lots of fruits and veggies. I'm dairy-free, exercise on a regular basis. My asthma during the warm weather months is very controlled with medication. But like clockwork, every November, I start to suffer from nasal congestion, coughing, low energy, and seemingly low immune system. This seems to go on and on and for the winter months. I'm interested in finding the root cause of my asthma instead of constantly treating symptoms with meds. Do you have a protocol for asthma? So thank you, James, for writing in. So there's no direct protocol for asthma. What we do is we run a hair tissue mineral analysis and an organic acids test. And that allows us to look at your mineral levels, your zinc levels for sure for asthma and allergies, and then magnesium balance with calcium. Those are huge. If copper is elevated, copper can contribute to high copper levels can contribute to allergies and asthma. And then we want to look at heavy metals. The interesting thing that you wrote though, is that they get worse in the winter. Well, Cold weather absolutely affects asthma. There's no doubt about that. However, there are such things called winter allergies, where sometimes they can kick up in the winter. Dust can kick up more in the winter. There's less of the airflow. We can also get sometimes, it's usually more damper months, but there's possibility for more mold, especially as we're turning on that heat. So what I would do is I would get tested for some of those winter allergies as well. And as you reduce your total rain barrel, as you start to empty the rain barrel, what you'll find is that your asthma and your allergies uh, will be more controlled because they're, they are lumped together. And that's because the inflammation begins to go down. One other thing you may want to run is an adrenal hormone test. And that's because people with lower levels of cortisol often have higher levels of asthma or allergies because cortisol is not all bad. It actually acts as a natural anti-inflammatory. So I hope, James, you find your answer, and that is the place I would start. Stacy's up next. Stacy writing in, Hi, my husband just finished the 21-day detox. A couple days before he finished the detox, I started getting vaginal itching and burning sensation around the opening of the vagina. I also had an increase in athlete's foot. I do experience these off and on, but they came back last week, and I'm still dealing with it. Do you have any remedies that could work topically? Would you recommend the CBO protocol? Uh, Can't afford the lab testing right now. Did a question on Facebook. A possible problem with starting the CBO protocol. We are going on vacation to Aruba, March 9th to the 16th. I guess I was wondering what course of action should we take? I could copy and paste my Facebook. Nope, that's all right. I lost six to eight pounds on the detox. All right, fantastic. Here's what I would do. And I'm going to take out your last name because I, I don't want to put all that in there. So we will keep this anonymous to Stacy. So for any type of yeast infection, we absolutely recommend the CBO protocol with citricidal drops. Okay. The second part to that is this. For topically, you can use coconut oil just as a moisturizer and antifungal, but also we can use boric acid suppositories and you can simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast and type in boric, B-O-R-I-C, and you will find the protocol there for helping with any type of uh, bacterial vaginosis, yeast infections, discharge, or anything uh, where you feel like the pH of the vagina is not balanced. So check that out and look into that. All of those are very helpful and they work great in our practice because remember, We always want to get to the root cause, which is typically some type of bacterial or candida-based overgrowth in the gut. But at the same time, of course, we don't want to wait the, you know, four, five, six weeks where you start getting the results you want. You can also work right away by using coconut oil and the boric acid suppositories for three to five days. Okay. And you said you were on vacation March 9th through the 16th. Well, it's April 13th or so. So I think you're in the clear now to get started. Anonymous is up next. I'm writing about an issue I haven't found covered, but I suffer from vaginismus. This has made intercourse very painful and basically impossible. I was only diagnosed by my gyno a few years ago, and I haven't found many treatments for it than basically physical therapy. For me, this is primary as someone who's always experienced pain when using tampons or even exercising, and this does not come from any past abuse or trauma. Has this come up in your practice? And do you have a root cause explanation or recommendations outside of physical therapy that may help? 
Thank you for all the resources and information you provide. I can't tell you how much your podcast and online community has helped me. Thank you for writing in. Anonymous, we appreciate you and I'm happy to help with this. So one of the nice things is I've been doing this now for many years and we've seen pretty much every case out there. So when we work with women that there, where there is painful sexual intercourse, we always look at two things. And so let me just give a background. Vaginismus, I don't even know if that's a correct pronunciation, but you can see it's spelled at stephencabral.com forward slash 1164. But we do know that it's essentially inflammation and it's muscle spasms or contractions, typically called caused by the pelvic floor muscles. But keep in mind, when you do pelvic floor therapy, that can absolutely be very helpful. So pelvic floor therapy is actually much more common now. I was in a practice before I started my own practice back in the day, and one of the therapists there was actually someone that did pelvic floor therapy. That's what she specialized in, and she was great at it. So here's what we found, though, to be much uh, that you can do that. But in conjunction, we want to look at, okay, well, let's go back root cause wise. If this person's been having this issue, you know, for many years, a couple things. So one is people hold tension and stress in different areas. Some people get constipated. Some people get loose stool. Some people get neck tension. Some people get a queasy gut. So there's all sorts of different things. I always look at what are the levels of stress? So I'd love to run at a minimum, a hair tissue mineral analysis. The max, you know, the the best would be an adrenal hormone lab. But I also want to look at something else. I want to look at what's overall inflammation in the body. So I typically run an organic acids test for that. I'm just giving you labs that you may want to look at. You don't need to run them, but you may. Other things that have been quite helpful is higher dose omega-3 therapy. And again, you know I don't do high, high dosage. When I talk about higher dose, I'm talking about two to three grams a day, okay? And you can do that for about six to eight weeks, and you can see what type of benefit it also provides. Nice anti-inflammatory and balances inflammatory prostaglandins, okay? So these are specific inflammatory prostaglandins like prostaglandin series six that cause a lot of inflammation. The last part is this. We've seen it in women, and this happens sometimes just postmenopause, so not menopausal, or I should say premenopausal, but we have seen it in lower levels of hormones. And I would like you to look into this as well, which is also why I recommend if you still have your cycle, to run this around day 19 or so of your cycle. Anywhere between day 19 and 21 is fine. And you'll run that adrenal hormone test or the thyroid adrenal hormone for even more information. And this will allow you to look at a lot of these root causal-based issues because sometimes we never know why. And then we run the labs and we say, oh, look at these imbalances. And there are multiple. We'll work on all of them. We'll rebalance the body and the body can heal on its own. So I like, I mean, I really go after things from every angle possible. So I like the physical therapy. I like the omega-3s. I like the anti-inflammatory diets. But again, all angles. I want to integrate. That's for integrative health practitioner, right? I want to integrate everything. Whatever works, I want to use. And the reason is all we want to do are get people the results they're looking for. But from a natural perspective and one that will last a lifetime. It's great to do, again, the pelvic floor exercises. But, and again, this is not on pelvic floor therapy because I actually am, am, am pro it. I believe in it. I'm, I'm for it. But it's, it'd be like, okay, so you have back issues and you go to a chiropractor. We have to see your chiropractor every week because the work has never been done to, let's say, open up your psoas muscles, open up your hamstrings, work on your core muscles, work, fix your posture, right? So I'm always looking at, well, like, what's the root cause? So yes, you can go to your chiropractor, you can go to the pelvic floor therapist, but it should be a finite period of time, maybe six weeks, maybe eight weeks while you're working on other things as well. Hopefully that was a, a good start, at least anonymous to your question. Vanessa is up next. Vanessa is writing in. Good evening. Firstly, I want to say, how much I've been enjoying reading The Rain Barrel Effect, and thank you for all the information and resources you provide in the book. I've been trying to switch to a more natural makeup and just had a quick question. I hope it's okay to contact you about this. There is a brand here in Australia called, well, I'll I'll read it. I'll read it in general. It's called Anika or Anika Organic, N-I-K-A. That is considered a natural makeup brand. I had a look at their ingredient list and their mineral foundation includes the following titanium dioxide, iron oxides, and that's it. Is this what should be avoided in toxic makeup ingredients on page 22, 222 of your book under coal, tar, and dyes? I only ask because I was looking 
at the Maya's Foundation ingredients, and they also contain iron oxides. And these numbers, so I was a bit unsure, I did have a look at the link provided to David's website, but I wanted to double check. Thank you very much for any information or assistance you have. Okay, so I don't know David per se, but let me give you some input on these toxic items. Okay, so let's answer your question. And well, it's not very straightforward. So let me give you all the information and then I'm going to let you make the best decision for you and anyone that you're recommending this to if you're one of our integrative health practitioners or, or someone that's doing health coaching. So iron oxide and titanium oxide, let's start with titanium oxide. These are natural. So titanium is a natural element, mineral, et cetera, out there. But what we're looking at is taking it and crushing it down to a powder. The side effects for titanium dioxide, and when I was doing my research specifically in all of these, the reason it's used in cosmetics is that it's a white pigment powder. So they can get a, they can get a pigment, they can get a color out of it, and that's what we get with a lot of these metals. Well, there doesn't seem to be any side effects when placed on the skin. However, there are major side effects when inhaled. And one of those can cause lung cancer. So because we don't have any studies saying that it's not a harmful place in the skin, I just get a little bit leery. The idea that it could cause cancer if inhaled into the body and the lungs. Now, I know that there's not a very good clearance path for when that does happen, but it's not my favorite ingredient. But I see why they use it, and that's to create a white pigment color. Now, it's along the same lines as iron oxide. Iron oxide would be, I would say, a little bit safer than titanium dioxide. However, what you're really putting in your body is rust because the iron oxide is then giving you, instead of the white pigment, it's giving you that orangey, sienna, rust-colored pigment. And so you're, you're placing uh, an oxidized, I mean, that's oxide, iron oxide right there. It basically means rust on your skin. So... It is not an antioxidant. It's an oxidant, right? So they're not the best things to put on your body. How dangerous they are, I think there's, there's, not, there's actually not a ton of research on both of those. But titanium dioxide, there is research on it being swallowed, which there's only tests right now in laboratory rats, to my, to my knowledge, but it does cause intestinal-based inflammation and potential kidney issues. But... Uh, that, of course, it's higher dosage on a rat. They haven't found that in humans, but they have found it on inhalation. So what is my recommendation? Well, I always want as clean as possible. Those two ingredients are not as clean as possible. So it's a tough one for me because I know that you want to use something, but those are not on my clean list. So Vanessa, that's, that's where I stand. All right, Kristen's up next. My husband and I are trying to get pregnant for the second time. The first time I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes, having educated myself on the pathogenesis of the disease, I'm seeking help to avoid hormonal imbalances if at all possible. I understand most of this is due to placental hormone release, but I'm wanting to avoid it if I can control it with my diet, etc. I have a degree in in biomedical sciences, so I can keep up with the lingo if you wouldn't mind giving me any advice with an explanation of why to me. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a great, you know, this is a great question for everybody because, you know, a lot of people believe that gestational diabetes is only if you are overweight or that you eat processed food all the time. And don't get me wrong, that will absolutely affect it. Like you'll be at a higher incidence or rate for gestational diabetes, but I've worked with quite a number of women uh, who are more prone to gestational diabetes because of a number of factors. One, more of an endomorphic body type. Number two, more of a genetic predisposition. And, you know, number three is the diet was not as clean the first time around. So what I've done is because we, we absolutely do not want to go low carb while pregnant because then there's potential for greater release of cortisol, which we know affects the brain and growth of the fetus of the fetal development. And we don't want to go too low carb as well because we would never want to get into a state of ketosis uh, while pregnant. That is not a healthy state to be in. So what we're looking to do is keep carbs in. We're absolutely going with predominantly a ve- predominance of vegetables. We're doing fruit and berries, and we are doing some root vegetables as well. Very low on the processed foods. We're going, I, I don't like snacking with gestational diabetes, so I'm trying to do three meals per day. We can add more if needed, absolutely. But remember, just because you do three uh, meals per day doesn't mean that has to change your calories. You can actually get the same calories in over three meals 
uh, you just have more time to regulate blood sugar. And I'm still also a a proponent of 12-hour fast while pregnant. I'm still a proponent of 7 o'clock at night to 7 in the morning. And you could even, you know, bump that from maybe 6.37 to 8 in the morning. Just have to listen to your body on that for sure. Now, other things that can help. Of course, you want to be doing something like our daily nutritional support powder with a little bit of omega-3s, plus the you can do the daily fruit and vegetable blend if you want, but you want to add that extra 400, 500 grams or milligrams of methylfolate for sure, or activated folate is what we call it. And the last part is this. You can look into products such as chromium, vanadium, and ALA, which are all great products for regulating blood sugar to a better degree. Usually I don't go a lot of herbs. We have a great product called Gluco Support, and I'm a huge fan of that product. But I usually don't go a lot of herbs like banana leaf and um, items like that while pregnant. So that's what we do. And we've had actually quite a bit of success with it. For sure, we have. And I won't, <laughs> I won't name any name specifically, but we've, we've done this um, quite a bit. And you know, sometimes it's unavoidable. You, you do your very best. But to me, that would be doing your very best. And then also exercising and getting your 10,000 steps a day to soak up as much of that blood sugar as possible. All right. We, let me see if we're going to keep it at this for today. We are going to keep it at today. I know it's like a little shorter today, but we're going to keep it at that because the next question is a monster question. And I like to do my best to keep this, these weekend host calls at about 23, 24, 25 minutes um, so that hopefully people can catch up on all the podcasts from the week and uh, listen to maybe on the weekends to catch up or so. But Thank you so much for everyone that's written in. We just will continue answering your questions each and every weekend. Take care, everyone. Have an amazing uh, rest of the weekend, if, if that is when you're listening to this. And please, like I said, always do feel free to share this healing message with anyone else you believe it could serve. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues. After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.